And these eight steps you can do every day, twice a day. You know, sometimes you can do them slowly. Sometimes you can rush through them. But really, if you commit to that for like three months, you know, and hopefully it'll be longer, but you can really turn your mouth around. And usually most people are just so encouraged by the progress that they keep going and it becomes a new way. All right. Thank you so much, Nadine, for joining us on Staying Ageless. I'm super excited to have you. I'm super happy to be here. Um, so your book changed my life, like oh, literally. <laughs> um, I, that's why I was like so geeked out to have you on the show. The Holistic Dental Care, The Complete Guide to Healthy Teeth and Gums. Um, so I was poisoned by mercury. And it's actually like the one major health issue that I've had, like um, that has caused a whole other, you know, realm of problems for me um, health wise. And so that's when I got really, really fascinated because I was I was deathly afraid of the dentist and just really fascinated with does anyone have any other theories (laughs) on how to fix this issue? So coming across your book was like a revelation. And I really want um Either you have so much knowledge to share, but I would love you to talk first about what led your what led you to have a personal fascination with oral care. I'm, I'm curious about that. Well, it was about in my early 20s, and I had really just spent the past like four or five years understanding like health and and skincare, and like that there there was really a whole bunch of other things we could be doing for very common things that can happen whether it's like a headache or eczema or whatever. So I really felt, you know, and I had already started to formulate my own skincare products and I had opened up North America's first full concept aromatherapy store with all my own formulas and everything. And so I kind of like every part of the body I was getting and I was like, okay, so we'll do this and this, blah, blah, blah. But the teeth was a bit of a like, you know, final frontier. And, you know, being a young woman, I am Canadian. So generally speaking, you have like, you kind of get dental care, I think until you you know, till you're about a young adult. Um, you know, I definitely had it. I had that, but then I was like a, a young businesswoman, and you don't want to spend the thousand dollars on the dentist. It's not very exciting. And there's a lot of other things to be spending money on, including rent and all that kind of stuff. So there was that, like the hesitancy to go. So there's a bit of neglect and none of us really liked the, who liked the dentist growing up in that whole thing, every part of it. I'm sure there was some good stories out there, but generally speaking, nobody's like, yay, <laughs> let's go to the dentist. So there was a lot to figure out. And I, and where I was feeling like I knew now what to do if I got a headache or acne or just so many things in my body it was like a whole new level of care, but I didn't know what to do with my mouth. Anyway, I did know to go. I found a holistic dentist in Toronto. That's like a big city. That's where you could find them back in the nineties. And, um, on, in retrospect, they weren't that holistic, but the, the hygienist was very uh, interesting. And she was like, look, you can do this and that. And she's like, you have the beginning of a cavity. She's like, go home, make work with all those herbs and plants that you do. Take care of it. Keep it clean. Come back in six months and we'll see if it's still there. And besides like all of that, I was like, well, wait a minute. Like I just thought like a cavity was a cavity was a cavity. Like, what do you mean the teeth are like, so it just brought in this concept of like, oh my God, of course the teeth are connected to the, every part of our body. I grew up feeling like they were just like the adult teeth were like just formed sort of stones in the body. And that was it. They weren't connected to the life force and the like, but the thing is the teeth are alive, you know, they're alive Mm -hmm. and they're connected to the body. They're not just like dead little things in your mouth. So, (laughs) So the good thing is that that also means they're connected up to the body. So they're connected up to like what can rejuvenate the body as well. And so, you know, what, what is that whole system? So at first it was very much just like learning about the ways that I can topically care for my teeth. And I did, I put together what is now known as happy gumdrops, which was this dental serum, which isn't like, which really is like a whole new category of a product. It's not like, Right. It's like right. we can take, a, you know, like a body oil or a body serum and then make the beautiful natural version. Um, but 
dental serums didn't really exist. And I just found it so helpful. I was like massaging the gums, getting the gum health back, putting it on the spot, putting it along my floss and getting it like those botanicals up in between the gum tissue and between the teeth, which, you know, often didn't get a lot of stimulation. So all those things I was doing, and then I went back and the teeth, the tooth had solidified. And so, the, yeah, and I, wow. then I learned all about cavities and yes, you can get a solidification. The tooth can regenerate. Obviously it depends on a lot of things and a lot to do with nutrition. So if there is an issue going on with the teeth, yes, there could be sort of a topical neglect, but often it's a sign of the body needing something else. It's saying, Hey, we need more D3 K2. We need more time in the sun. We got to get the bones healthy, that kind of thing. But what I didn't learn hmm. um, at that time, I mean, I learned that I created the product, but it wasn't until I was researching for, well, it was pre-researching for my book because I was really trying to understand the tooth system. And this is what, what impelled, inspired me to write my book was seeing that there was, how are the teeth connected to the body other than obviously we can see that. So I started to do a lot of research and one of my favorite dentists, which we're so indebted to, especially regarding mercury, he's really the, the father of, of us knowing that in the States. So in 19, since 1963, he has been warning us against, uh, he's, he died um, about five years ago, but Dr. Hal Huggins has been telling us about mercury okay. not as a poison for the body since 1963. Um, he also had mercury poisoning as well. Um, anyway, he wrote books on dentistry, but he wrote this small book that I found was secondhand because I love, you know, I love finding old books and it was just called why raise ugly kids. Cause he has, a, he has a sense, he has a bit of a shaky <laughs> sense of humor, but one of the chapters is all about dental care and you know how, you know, the pre, like prenatal diet is obviously key. <laughs> you know, when the teeth start forming in the womb, all that kind of stuff. And then he had this one paragraph that was like so mind blowing. And that's what set me off on this other course. So he meets Dr. Hal Huggins met up with Dr. Ralph Steinman, who was a dentist in the fifties mm -hmm. who had severe allergies so extensively that in August of every year, he couldn't practice dentistry because he was so inflamed with allergies. So he would take the month off. But he was reading and he always felt the teeth were systemically connected. And long story short, he cut out all the white foods, you know, white bread, white sugar, white, white, just the processed toxicity of the white foods. And oh, all of a sudden he didn't have allergies anymore. So huh. he was just fascinated because, again, this is in the 50s. We don't we're not at all thinking food and health are related, which is amazing to think that we weren't really thinking that deeply about health and food anyway, but that made him actually um, kind of give up his practice and go, I got to study this more. So he, he gave up his practice and then started working at a research university. And that was sort of the, how he spent the rest of his years. And he's like, we got to find out how they're connected. So again, long story short, um, he realizes that through using x-ray dye that upon chewing, you know, things are activated and it takes about six minutes for that to get to the what that the juices to get down and the you know the food into the stomach, and then that gets processed. And then interestingly, it only takes about it takes that takes about six minutes. But then for that that nutrient to get back up into the tooth, that takes about an hour. And so the teeth are oh, like wow. trees, and they're like the root system is gathering up nutrients from the soil. And the teeth roots are gathering up the nutrients in their roots through the blood and then sucking that up into the pulp chamber of the tooth, which is where a lot of the chemical magic happens. And then that blood gets fenestrated and becomes lymphatic liquid that then gets pumped wow. out through odontoblasts, which are like sort of bone pumps. And this lymphatic fluid pumps out onto the surface of the teeth where it's like this microscopic sweat that coalesces with the saliva to nurture the teeth, to nurture that environment. That's how, that's what I call the invisible toothbrush. And that's what's making our bodies work. And that's what's making our teeth work. That's not a system that's dependent on, you know, Listerine and going to the dentist twice a year, because we've got to always look back to like what's sort of the design of the body. 
right? We weren't born with a toothbrush yeah. in our hand. So what's yeah. going on? Because the body was designed to be successful. So it, when we're That's stressed terrible. or sort of having a long, unhealthy time or like stressful periods, like pregnancy, teenageness, you know, hormonal changing times, we start to suck. So that system gets reversed. So that system that pulls nutrients into the tooth, it actually get, can stagnate. So it's a dentino lymph system. And that's what Dr. Hal Huggins was speaking to about Steinman was he, there was like this discovery of a dentineal lymph system. And that literally blows out all things that we've, you know, learned about dentistry in the previous hundred years. Um, and so that, so that system, which is so key to bringing nutrients to the tooth, if, if we're stressed or poor health, it will stagnate. And so then no nutrients are coming up. Now, if that progresses and is prolonged, that system actually reverses. So it's not even just stagnant. And now the tooth becomes like a straw and it's sucking into the tooth from the oral environment, fungus, bacteria, viruses. And then that is actually the genesis of a cavity. And that's the system that we want to keep happy. And of course, it's really a chemical system like most things in the body. So Dr. Ralph Steinman was like, well, what's the switch for all of this? And then he, he decided to, um, then he um, partnered with an endocrinologist, Dr. John Leonora. And then together they did like another thousand studies. Of, so of course they discovered that the chemicals messaging system comes from the hypothalamus. And then it's sending, uh, you know, the, so when we're chewing message, there's a parotid gland uh, sort of by the jaw and that's, of course, sending messages up to the hypothalamus. And then the hypothalamus is triggering that whole dentinal dent lymphatic system. So, yes, teeth are connected to the body and the brain and the endocrine system and the digestive system and our reflection even of the gut microbiome. So amazing. <laughs> that, was like, that was like 10 of my questions in one. Really great. Amazing. Um, I... So we talk about the dentinal fluid and how when it reverses everything, that's when cavities can happen. How does that, how does the dentinal fluid and the micro, like, can you explain the oral microbiome? Is the dentinal fluid is a key component of the oral microbiome along with the saliva? Is it all of those things together? Or when the dentinal fluid reverses, is the oral microbiome all of a sudden now um, going downhill? That's a good question. I would say, okay, in the scheme of like the tooth and, well, obviously I say the tooth, but we mean every tooth, a teeth, whatever. The whole tooth thing, the dentineal fluid is like major and kind of the whole thing. Now, if then we look at the whole mouth and we're looking at the whole environment, um, it's all interrelated, but it's like, the microbiome is actually even a little bit more broader. You know what I mean? So, and if that lymph system's going off, well, the microbiome's probably off because for that system to go off, you know, it's got to be stress, high sugar. So again, it's not about, it's not really about the soda pop and the sugar and the acid sitting on the teeth so much as that soda pop. I don't even know if that's what people call it, but you know what I'm saying? Pop soda. I don't know what it, you know, the, that soda moving through the body, acidifying the system and um, depleting minerals and adding sugar to the bloodstream. You know, that's why the soda is not good. <laughs> so, right. Okay. So knowing that it's like, so yeah, if you've got a situation where the tooth lymphatic system isn't happy, then probably the oral microbiome's off because the whole thing's probably up, but definitely the gut microbiome, and the oral microbiome are very much connected. And if we want to just focus on the oral microbiome for a moment, you, you definitely, it's like, you know, it's kind of like a little ocean in there. Your saliva should be creating a sea of alkalinity. And so you can test your saliva with pH paper and, you know, you want to have it on the side of alkalinity. And so if it isn't, you know, there's deeper dietary things to look at, but you can really right away start getting an alkaline environment by swishing with baking soda. So just putting a pinch of baking soda in water or even a pinch of sea salt or both. And if you've really got to turn mm. things around, then you could just have that little pinch of baking soda in water every time after you eat. Mm -hmm. So just swishing and, and spitting out. 
that's also a really good thing for kids to do um, because kids aren't the greatest brushers. And so if you can get them to swish and spit, a lot of the work is done because again, creating the good, there's the issue of plaque, but again, you want to just creating like a happy environment for the gums and teeth and tongue to be in is a lot of the strategy. How much do the dental products that we're used to contribute or um, not contribute to alkalinity? Are most of, I mean, we, we know Listerine and we have toothpaste with fluoride in it. Um, there's all these products. What are they actually doing to our oral microbiome? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, it, yeah, we'd have to look at individual things to really check the alkalinity and stuff, but I don't think Glastream would have any kind of alkalinity. Anything that would have any commercial toothpaste that has any kind of baking soda in it would have the alkalinity because baking soda is super alkaline. But that being said, I mean, just, uh, and of course, I make uh, these amazing dental care products and all kinds, but you don't have, like, if you just, because again, I don't want people to have to be dependent on what I make. So we've got that option, but literally, if you just got a pound of baking soda, that would last you for years. And if all you ever did was brush your teeth with baking soda, a pinch of baking soda for the rest of your life, your mouth and your teeth would be far, far better off than using any commercial mouthwash or toothpaste. So just know that and know like you can literally mm. start right away, right now, and just turning things around for your mouth. Um, what other things they can do to so contribute? Well, there's like, you know, triclosan is in toothpaste, which is just... It's kind of like an antibiotic and it's very uh, toxic to aquatic ecosystems, which I feel like our bodies really are an aquatic ecosystem. And triclosan has been removed from hand sanitizers now because they discovered it actually makes us more oh vulnerable goodness. to superbugs because it's messing with the microbiome. But it's still allowed in toothpaste, which is just phenomenal. Then there's also things like um, sodium lauryl sulfate in toothpaste, which is causing it causes bleeding and receding gums this is like which is like a huge issue wow. for the population of the planet wow yeah that's a lot of stuff um so i think your i think your book is the first time i had heard about using essential oils for oral care and i love it i love essential <laughs> oils i'm obsessed um, so can you talk a little bit about, uh, w essential oils that have been used historically for oral care, which ones you like and what exactly they're doing that's beneficial? Yes. Well, yeah. And when I was formulating, of course, I was drawn to use in oral, in my oral care formulations in the dental serums, toothpaste and stuff. We also have an ozonated gum gel, all of those. It's like really working with it's various cultures, but, you know, trans historically, these have been used for oral care. So that's like plants like frankincense, myrrh, uh, Australian aboriginals using tea tree, um, rose auto, peppermint, cardamom, you know, all, clove, cinnamon, all these great herbs and essential oil distillate. So I was working with those for their historical use of, of helping to rejuvenate gums um, you know, clove has, has a huge historical use for gum, for pain and tooth pain and all that kind of stuff. And then also I, I know that they're all to varying degrees, antifungal, antiviral, anti-inflammatory and antibacterial, which are all things that we want to do in the mouth. So I'm formulating with those. But then what I'm also loving is that in the past 10 years, we've also had just so much research and science into the microbiome. So then um, studying that, it's so fascinating because you can um, we can now find out so much about this union of using these historically used plants for oral care with modern science. And what we're finding out is the the essential oils are so the plant ally for our mouths because they're able to do something called QSI, which is quorum sensing inhibitors which is like, why do we care huh. about that? It's so important because normally, so again, with our mouths, we're trying to have a balance between pathogenic bacteria and friendly bacteria. And it's pathogenic bacteria that start causing inflammation or cavities, that kind of thing. So, and normally even in our, even for health, it's like, 
in our bodies, we now know there's like billions of bacteria that are there to keep our health in balance, our hormones in balance, our digestion in balance, our bodies in balance. And then when pathogens come in, that's the beginning of, of you know, a, something, <laughs> some imbalance in the body. And there's always going to be pathogens in our body. But, you know, when the environment then, when they can start to gain traction and they can start sort of grouping up, that's, that's quorum sensing. So they're able to then get together in a group, be stronger, and then they're able to express their genes and then create havoc in the body. So what, ascent, what QSI does, quorum sensing inhibitors, which essential oils, are able to clean up, tidy up the pathogenic bacteria, but at the same time, they're able to work cooperatively with the beneficial bacteria. So literally, this is like, we need that kind of intelligence, discernment, you know, that kind of discernment in our bodies, because we're now at sort of peak antibiotic resistance, as globally because they've been overused. So now antibiotics are less effective. We don't have things that can bust through biofilms. And also antibiotics are indiscriminate. They're kind of like, let's you're gonna go in there, we're gonna kill it all. It's sort of this scorched earth policy on germs. Whereas mm. um, things like the essential oils that are able to do QSI, they're able to have that discernment where they're cleaning up the pathogens but caring for the beneficial bacteria. And if that ain't just the medicine we need on many levels right, right. now. Um, so even right. to the extent like um, in European farming, n- they know antibiotic resistance is a thing. And so they've actually introduced essential oil f- to the feed. And it's, it's working like an antibiotic did, but in a better way because the health isn't compromised and all the microbiomes of the animals aren't, just having the species wiped out from overuse of antibiotics that is eventually showing up in our food supply. And then we're drinking milk with like allowable allow- limits of triclosite, triclos- triclos- you know, the one triclosan and, you know, and that's yeah. actually an antibiotic that really does wreak havoc on the teeth. So there's a whole little system, you know, that we got to like step back and just really see So if we start eating the right foods, hopefully we're eating in a way that we don't cause our dental fluid to reverse. So we're not eating processed foods. We're not eating too many starches, all that stuff. We're not eating, I don't know. There's the whole, obviously the sugar myth, but um, I think you already kind of debunked that. (laughs) If we're not doing that and we're kind of going the holistic route, because we have to earn, learn all these things, sometimes it's like, what are the steps I need to take every single day to take care of my teeth? Like, what are the essential things that I really actually do need to do? On my end, I do oil pulling now. I do, I floss with essential oils. I do tongue scraping and different things. But are there certain things that you're like, this is mandatory? <laughs> well, that's a great question. And actually, um, before I even published the book, I developed these eight steps And these eight steps you can do every day, twice a day. You know, sometimes you can do them slowly. Sometimes you can rush through them. But really, if you commit to that for like three months, you know, and hopefully it'll be longer, but you can really turn your mouth around. And usually most people are just so encouraged by the progress that they keep going and it becomes a new way because it's effective. You're getting somewhere, you know, and people are showing up at the dentist sort of with better report cards at the end of it, which is happy for everybody. So yeah, and the steps include, I don't know if I always have them like right out of the top of my head, but there's the swishing. Yeah, oil pulling, you can do either before or after your whole oral thing. I like to do it after because then you're working with a cleaner mouth, sort of going in deeper. But you can start with a rinse. So that's the baking soda or salt water thing. We usually just make up a big mason jar, have a few little shot glasses in the bathroom, and then each family member has their own shot glass. And then... um, then you want a tongue scrape. It'll be probably like, you know, anywhere from one to five times. And it'll probably be less and less as the months progress. And that gets rid of all the plaque and stuff off your the back of your tongue. <laughs> and then there is um, first brushing with a manual brush. And you're really going right up into the top of the gum line where it meets the cheek. And then you're brushing down. We're always brushing gum towards teeth. And you'll, you could get faster at that, but it's a little bit of a relearn. It's not back and forth because that is, is making the gum line recede. And that 
Eric, the line with the gum and the teeth meet is so precious, and it's also where a lot of havoc begins. That's the receding gum lines. We need the gums to be like nice turtlenecks around each teeth. We don't want them receding into like a cowl neck situation. So you really want to brush carefully. And then the next phase is with an electric toothbrush. And we actually just got, I've, it's taken a few years, but we finally have a, an electric toothbrush. It has zero EMFs. And it's got a very special angle and there's different um, heads for morning and night to get the different angles. And it's like removes plaque, like amazing. So the, the electric also, and I've also recommended before, just like a little oral B one, it's like $25 little round head. So you're getting to different parts of the teeth that your manual isn't. And then the electric toothbrush phase is where you're really focusing on polishing the teeth. The first phase is really about stimulating and brushing those gums and then you're doing the teeth, um, and then, and of course you're using either like baking soda as your toothpaste, the dental serum, our toothpaste, um, and the dental serum can just be one drop and a little smidge of toothpaste. Even our toothpaste, you're really using less of because they're so concentrated, you don't need a lot. And then it's flossing, and you're gonna take that dental serum or the ozonated gum gel and just put a drop along the floss, and then you wanna floss twice. And you'll know why the second time. Okay. There's like a whole bunch more stuff that usually comes out for people, especially in those beginning months. And then um, after that, you can rinse again. And then you're just going to put a drop of the a dental serum or the ozonated gel if you have gum issues. And you're going to massage that along the gum line. And then if anybody's got really tricky areas or receding gum lines, we have these syringes that are blunt tipped. And you can use like a, a 3% hydrogen peroxide rinse. You can add a dental serum to that. You could do a, a, an alkalinizing baking soda rinse. There's a, lots of suggestions on our website. And then you would just flush out. It's kind of like a tiny microscopic water pick that you're also really able to direct and get mm. under the gum line. And then I think that's the eight steps. And then after that, you can then you could do your oil rinsing. I mean, your oil pulling if you want which is a great way to really whiten the teeth. Have you awesome. found your teeth get got more white since you've been oil pulling? Oh, yes, definitely. There was a market difference. There was a market difference. And and for me, it was also like, how do I get Most my teeth? Most people find that they do be- get increased, like just, I find, yeah, there's like glowing teeth after. Yeah. And also, you know, I wasn't interested in doing bleaching or any any of those treatments. And I don't I don't actually really know, but I'm assuming that that's actually probably very detrimental for your teeth. Yeah, in short, I mean, it's a type like it's bleaching and it's weakening the enamel, which mm. makes a bit of a catch twenty two because it'll just you'll have weaker yellowed enamel more easily as the years go by. That makes you know, sense. And that's no fun. And really the whiteness of the tooth is actually coming from inside the tooth. The, it's really reflecting the health of the pulp chamber. So really, yeah, being plump in fat soluble vitamins because the enamel is actually like kind of transparent, like a window. And so also if you, if you know people that had like a poor diet um, and well, or you can tell by the teeth, because if you see a gray glassy teeth, that's often a sign that, you know, then there's not enough nutrients in the body and the pulp chamber is not getting those fat soluble nutrients. That makes sense. Wow. Okay. You mentioned, you mentioned hydrogen peroxide is what is the best or what are the ways that you can use hydrogen peroxide for oral care? Yes, I use it. I say, you know, you want to use it, um, like just keep it in your thing, but it's not a daily thing I find. I mean, sometimes if people have like a really crazy bacterial infection or something, it might come in handy, but it can be a bit astringent for the gums. So I like to save it for like a one one to three times a month thing. And you can simply mm. just do rinse with the 3% uh, situation. You can, um, you can definitely use it all the time. You put your, we'll do like have moments with our toothbrush where we'll just dip it in there overnight uh, you know, and just get like, have it clean sort of once a month, like a deeper clean. Um, but what you can, and then you can also just sort of dip it in a 3% solution and then put your bath, um, toothpaste on top or, or a pinch of baking soda. And that way, you know, you can kind of do more of a, like a kind of whitening focusing brush. 
Um, but again, you know, rinse the mouth after and then do another rinse with baking soda and that will help uh, the astringency be less astringent of the hydrogen peroxide. And another fun thing you can do is in a little jar, take about a tablespoon of baking soda and then put about a teaspoon or so. It's not an exact formula of hydrogen peroxide. Mix it up a bit. Keep the cap off so the, the water evaporates. And then you kind of have a, a hydro, uh, hydrogen peroxide infused um, baking soda paste that you can use like once or twice a month to do a little bit more of a whitening brush. Little tips. Awesome. <laughs> That's super cool. Um, let's see. The other question. Well, I guess... The other question I have, because I'm deathly afraid of the dentist to this day, so your book saved me from having panic attacks <laughs> from going to the dentist. But I'm wondering, if you're on the holistic path of taking care of your teeth, and obviously you still want to be a responsible adult oh, and get checked out, <laughs> um, where would you find a dentist or practitioner that can actually help you and, and understand the principles that you outline in your book? Yes, because most of us, do. we do want a good dentist uh, on our team, and a lot of us have to actually clear up a lot of the past. So it's maybe great that we've got these steps going forward, but maybe there's some old dental work that might need cleaning up. So it is really great if you can find a good biological holistic dentist that you know that, that you can partner with in your oral health, and they're not going to be challenging you. Um, when you want, you know, things to be like minimally invasive or there's chemicals that you don't want to use. So because um, why add that extra layer of struggle? So there's a number of great dentists out there. And um, there's also some great organizations, which I don't rem have the full name of them. But there's a biological dental association and there's uh, another one. But anyway, we have all that information on our site and we give it. So I encourage email us wherever you are in the world and we'll do our best to like at least set you up with resources or definitely in the States and Canada, we actually know some specific dent dentists in certain areas. Like my absolute favorite is in Texas and people fly all over the world to see oh, cool. him because he really is that amazing. And so it's very key that you have a good dentist, you know, maybe you're not seeing them every year because your oral health is going to be in such great shape. But you and your you and your dentist will know. He'll be like, "Oh yeah, you're good for like coming every two years." Or maybe it's just all good, and you've just got that holistic hygienist at the office that you're seeing once a year, and she's keeping an eye on things. And then go, "Oh yeah, you can keep going without seeing the dentist." So that's you really want to work with people that you trust. You know, they're not just like having fun billing you because you have insurance, but you're making you know real decisions together. Because and I talk about this in Renegade Beauty. I have a pretty pretty deep dental chapter there as well. And uh, I follow the two, I look at two journalists that one journalist went across Canada and went to 20 dentists and one journalist went across the States and went to 50 dentists and <laughs> all 20 dentists, all 50 dentists had ex totally different treatment protocols ranging from, you know, $500 wow. to $36,000. Some of them saw cavities, some wow. of them didn't, some of them needed, you know, 20 teeth removed, some of them needed one. And many of them missed the actual what? problem. Interestingly, they actually, the two journalists had pretty much the same problem. They had an old crown that needed to be replaced. So wow. you got to work with a good dentist. Yeah. And it's not, it's not, it's, you know, yeah, oh, actually it was interesting because then the American Dental Association was asked what they thought about this article. I think it was written in the nineties. Um, and they just said, well, they said their response was, well, dental health is an art and a science. And it's like, well, now it's convenient <laughs> to say that, I guess. Because <laughs> all the other times it's just, <laughs> it's just, you know, we just think it's like x-rays and black and white. And they're this, you know, clearly if it's an x-ray, everybody's seeing the same thing. And it's just a very good example mm. of how you can take one x-ray to 50 different professionals and get 50 different opinions. Wow. I might need that referral for the dentist in Houston <laughs> that you know. <laughs> um, but this has been a really amazing interview. I feel like I could talk to you for like two hours, um, but I won't do that. I won't take up all your oh, time. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's it, yeah, Marble Falls. It's Dr. Nunnally. 
Okay. Okay. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, so can you, so you have Renegade Beauty and you also have um, Holistic Dental Care, the complete guide to healthy teeth and gums. Where can people find you online and also pick up your amazing holistic products? Oh, thanks. Well, everything can be found at livinglibations.com. And uh, I know my books are, are there and wherever books are sold, they're also on Audible. There's two Audible versions. And then you can also find us on Instagram at Living Libations Official and also my own Instagram at Nadine Artemis Official. Thank you so much, Nadine. For anyone listening, please, please, please go get her book like yesterday. Like it really, <laughs> you need it. Um, actually, Nadine, like really quick, one last question. What would you say? What would you say is the the biggest link between our oral health and longevity? Because we're on this show, we're concerned with staying ageless, looking fabulous, feeling great, but also um, just having good health well into our seventies and plus, if we can. Well, with the with there's so many answers to that, but specifically with the oral care is really just doing those simple eight steps because it's going to keep the bacterial balance, the bacteria balance, the microbiome balance, and it's when the bacteria from our mouths and the whole oral microbiome get imbalanced that the, that that starts to travel and can create biofilm in other parts of the body, mm. and so like bacteria, you know, plaque can be found in heart and lungs and brain plaque. So um, there's a bacterial plaque that's been found to be like related to Alzheimer's, you know, so there's a lot there. So really we want to, again, foster that beautiful, um, the beneficial bacteria, and then just have systems in the body that keep the pathogens in check. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nadine. Thank you.